What, what, what's up, course wizards? Welcome to yet another episode. This is your host, Amit. I'm here with my co host, Chris. What's happening? Hey, Amit. I'm so excited for 2023. We've been talking about how we create courses last week or all the kinds of courses there are. Now we're going to talk about the types of things we use. That's pretty cool, huh? Yes. Let's get through your tech stack this week. And then in next week's episode, we're going to talk about my tech stack. Uh, one thing we talk about tech stack, but I don't want our listeners and viewers to get scared that, oh my God, I need all of this to create a course. We have talked about this before. All you need is a mic, camera, and a software. Hey, can we tell you the truth about all you need is an iPhone or an Android phone? You get yourself a smartphone from today and you got YouTube or an email service and you can have an online course. So it is not as difficult as we make it sound as far as all these other things that we add to it. But here's what you'll find is that as you get into this, you're gonna go, oh, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that to make it a little better. And so that people often ask us, what do you use when you create your courses? And so that's what this week and next week are about is sharing the technological stacks that we personally have grown into over time. And as you'll see, as we talk today and next week, that there are items that we've even changed over to this year as we've grown in our own technological stack. Yep. Yeah. Let's you ready take to get started? Off, yeah. Yeah. Tell us what are you using for, let's start with courses. What are you using for your courses? If you've been listening to course visits for any length of time, you know that we both love New Zendler for hosting our courses. It is, gives you the most bang for your buck. It is a good, solid course creation platform. They let you do a lot of things on there, include selling digital products. They let you have webinars, live webinars, that sort of thing. You can have email that you can send from there. You can have communities really strong, good platform, and they do your video hosting, which is something we talked a bit about last week. If you missed that, you want to go back and listen to that because we share a lot of different course platforms and which ones are our favorites and New Zendler is hands down our favorite. Yep. All right. So let's talk about microphone. I think you switched it from last year. I did. I used to have a Blue Yeti, which is a good standard podcasting microphone that you'll find on Amazon for under a hundred dollars. A lot of people have the blue Yeti. Mine went kablooey this last year. And so I went to look for a new one. And when I did, I found the HyperX Quadcast S microphone, which is basically a very similar microphone in the same kind of price range as the blue Yeti, except for it's got nice led lights that you can, I can see, see when, you know, when you're, when you've got it online and it comes with the uh, some of the guards and things that you can plug in so it's a little less intrusive it's a little smaller which i liked man it's got a great sound so i really like the hyper x quadcast yep. x yeah and hyper x is uh, the same company who makes the i think gaming headphones too oh yeah this is what a lot of the twitch streamers use they like this microphone and that's how i found out about it i started watching some videos on it where they compared the blue yeti and this one and a lot of them just preferred this just for the sound and the fact that if you hit your table, you don't hear that as much as you would on a Blue Yeti because it's, uh, it has a little bit of protection against that yep. built right into it. And so I like that. And then awesome. for the video, I use a Logitech C922 camera. This is a very common video Most camera. Common, yeah. The, yeah, probably the most common. They're only about $60 now. They've really dropped in price and they are crystal clear they are just beautiful hd display and so i highly recommend this logitech 922 you can get that on amazon too all right and then so what do you do when we create courses typically we use slide deck to walk people through what do you use for presentations yeah i just use keynote which is basically like powerpoint if you're familiar for, with that but keynote is made by apple so it's on the max it's free i thoroughly enjoy keynote it's very easy to use looks really sharp and I can bring that right into any, any presentation I do. So I use Keynote just because it works well. PowerPoint you could use also. But then when I want to blog, I use WordPress. So I have a couple different apps like that for doing presentations and getting things out there. But now let me take that in a different direction. When I'm actually recording a video, I, while I use Keynote, I have to use other software to record the overall video. And last year I used ScreenFlow. This is a, an app for the Mac that makes it very easy to record yeah. your screen. And I will still really ScreenFlow. I haven't taken it off my Mac because I still use it once in a while. 
but I have since moved to Ecamm Live, which is a wonderful live presentation software for doing things like Facebook Lives and that sort of thing. You can also record your courses on it really nicely. And so you could do all kinds of things with lower thirds and graphics and that. Like I said, you grow into new apps. This is one of those apps that I've grown into now. And I really like Ecamm Live for that. Plus, I think it was on Black Friday. So it, it was on a Black Friday made it deal. A better, sweeter deal. And Black Friday, you missed you the, if I remember this, you missed the boat on the lifetime deal. By literally about seven days. Uh -huh. They had, they used to offer it at a one time price for a lifetime. And had I gotten into it at that point, I would still own it without paying today. But I missed out on that lifetime deal. That was about three or four years ago. And so now I, I have to pay for it every year. <laughs> and I pay for it, but it's worth it because it does so much. And it allows me to replace multiple pieces of software and apps that I was using. It does it all in one place. That's right. uh, Now for editing, I have also used ScreenFlow for editing as well as recording before. Right. But since I'm not using ScreenFlow for recording now, I have moved also my editing software to Descript, which is a wonderful online editor. They, they actually have an you actually download it to your computer, but it still syncs up online and it just works really slick. And what's cool about Descript is that you edit not as much by video as you do by the text that you speak. And so it's kind of hard to describe because you actually see it, but you it'll translate everything that you have in your video, all your voice. And then when you go to edit your video, you just edit the text and it'll edit the video for you based yeah. on what you do with the text. Yeah, you're so editing crazy. the you transcription. Have to look up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I use that too and I love it. It's definitely replaced. I would say people who care way too much about aesthetics, Descript is not for them because it's so simple, right? You, yeah. I don't think you can do cinematic stuff in it or... Things that if you're used to Adobe Premiere Pro or something like that, then it would be going a step back for you. But you and I love it because of the speed and the yeah. AI part where you can apply a green screen effect. You can just remove all the filler words. You can cut silences, all that fun stuff. Yeah, D Descript is not for creating movies or even short videos where you're trying to do anything cinematic like I'm going to say. No, this is for the course creator. And But if you're a course creator, you're going to love it. Yep. Now, speaking of transcriptions, it actually does have transcriptions. I used to use Happy Scribe all the time for creating online transcriptions. Now I use Descript most of the time for it and Happy Scribe just when I have a little extra because I have a lifetime deal on that one too. Okay. Then just a few other things for project management. I use ClickUp. I used to use Trello. I love Trello. I love the simplicity of it, but sometimes simple things are a little too simple when you get more complex in your business, right? And so I needed to move up to something a little more robust and click up fit the bill for that. When I take appointments for my, if I do online trainings and I've got where you can hire me or, or be mentored by me and what I do with writing and that sort of thing, I use Book Like a Boss, yep. which I really love. It's a solid piece of software. And then finally, the other app I love for design is Canva. Oh my goodness, I discovered Canva this last year and it has replaced so many of the apps that I use because it does everything so well. Anytime you need to create something for social, anytime you even want to create small videos, you can use Canva for that. And I've gotten to the point where if I need to do something on my computer, I almost always ask myself, I wonder if Canva can do that. <laughs> because yeah. it does so much and they keep adding more to it. In fact, they're getting ready to take on Google Docs and Google Sheets and, and Keynote and Google Slides and all that sort of thing here very shortly. They're starting to build that out. Yeah, they're becoming a bit of a juggernaut in the online space here. That's true. That's true. I was uh, doing my course that on chat GPT. We talked about that. I started creating Google Slides. I'm like, why the hell am I doing this in Google Slides? Let me do this in like Canva Slides. Canva is so easy with that kind of stuff. I, I have used it for that. And they also introduced Magic Write, right? Magic Rewrite, yep. which is their yep. AI copywriter. Then they have the text to image generator like Jasper and Midjourney. Yes. And then they also have video editing now. So you can literally upload your video and start editing it in your browser. That's right. It's it just crazy powerful. And it's, I want to say it's just over a month. $10 a month. Yeah, yeah, it's not much at all. 
So definitely probably one of the most affordable and most app used, options yeah. that I have that, that is the most used, yeah, for sure. What about Dub? You, do you, you still use Dub as well? I still use Dub quite often. Dub is an app where you can send people personalized videos or it's kind of like Loom or something like that. Uh, but I really like it because it'll create the automatic animated GIF file for you that you can put in emails that lets people comment back and video comment back and forth. It's just a very strong video explainer kind of recorder for short items that you need. And I use that instead of Loom or what's that other one that's really Berrycast? Something Berry like that. Cast, it's, yeah, it's yeah, real popular, which is solid, but I still, I like Dub better. It's just, it's a good piece of software. Yep. And on lifetime deal. Uh, yeah, I got it when it was a lifetime deal. I have sent, I've shown other pe it to other people and they've liked it so much that they're actually paying for it month to month. It's oh, one that you take advantage of a lifetime deal. You always hope that it's a strong enough product that it can exist on its own after the lifetime deal. It doesn't yeah. just get a bunch of people to sign up because it's cheap, <laughs> but that it actually is worth it. Kind of like we've talked about how Ecamm was yes. a lifetime deal. Now it's not anymore, but it's so good that people are willing to pay for it. Same thing with Dub. It was a lifetime deal, but it's so good now people are willing to pay for it. Book Like the Boss, same thing. It was a lifetime deal. It's so good. People are willing to pay yep. for it now. That's what we hope for all of them. Yes. Awesome. Well, yep. can you do us a recap of all the tools, your tech stack for 2020? Yeah. Real quick recap. Main thing I use is New Zendler to host all my videos and to create my courses. Hardware I use is the HyperX Quadcast S microphone, Logitech C922 camera. Folks, that's it. Other than a Mac, I don't need anything else. Just microphone, camera and a computer. Then for apps, I use Keynote, I use Ecamm Live, I use the script for video editing, I use Dub for quick videos, I use the script in HappyScribe for transcripts, I use WordPress for blogging, I also click up for my project manager, book like a boss for appointments, and Canva for design. Ah, oh, but I can't wait to hear next week what you use in all awesome. these. That's a wrap for your list, Chris. Yes, I'm excited for next week, which I mean, if people are watching us on YouTube, it's the same day we record. So that's why yeah. we are always in the same clothes. <laughs> but thank you again for tuning in. Chris, thank you for joining me. And to all our listeners, Happy New Year again. And keep creating. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.